X amount of calories. You're gonna lose all your muscle. Trying to combine two exercises into one. Bodybuilding can seem overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. Welcome to the Bodybuilding Bible, where we'll go over every single aspect of bodybuilding you can think of. In this guide, I'll share advice based on science, as well as some from intuition and general knowledge. To make it easy to tell the difference, there will be a green line at the top of the screen for science-based advice and the blue line for intuition or general knowledge advice. Plus, in the bodybuilding tree, the advice will be colored green or blue to show if they are backed by science or not. I want to keep this video really simple, so I won't be mentioning any studies, but in case you want to fact check what I'm saying, I'll be leaving links to all the scientific papers I used for this video in the description. Alright, so here's everything the video is gonna cover. First, we'll start with training, where we'll dive into everything that has to do with reps, including the number of reps per set, the tempo and the range of motion. Then, we'll go over sets and how many you should do per week, how intense they should be and how much should you rest between sets. After that, we'll cover the split, including the frequency to train each muscle and the type of split you should do. Finally, we'll go over some guidelines to always choose the best exercises for your workouts. But training is only half of the equation, so this guide will also cover diet starting with calories and how many you should consume on a bulk and on a cut. Then we'll explore macros and how many protein, fats and carbs you should eat per day. Lastly, we'll dive into some helpful supplements and the recommended doses, including creatine and caffeine. I know there's a lot to cover, but I promised that this was gonna be the bodybuilding bible. And in case you're only interested in some things, this whole video is gonna be timestamped. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bodybuilding Bible. Number of reps per set, 1 to 30 reps. You can lift from 30% of your 1 rep max to 100% and still gain the same muscle. This translates to doing 1 rep to around 30 reps. The amount of reps you do doesn't seem to have an impact on muscle growth, so you can pick the rep range you like the most. 8 to 16 reps. Doing between 1 and 8 reps increases the chances of injuries, and on the other hand, doing more than 16 reps can be really fatiguing. So, 8 to 16 reps is probably gonna be the sweet spot for most of you. Tempo slow eccentric. The eccentric is the part of the movement where the muscle you're working is being lengthened, which in most cases is when you're lowering the weight. The eccentric should be slow, which means that it should take you between 3 to 5 seconds to lower the weight. Fast concentric. The concentric is the opposite of the eccentric, so in most cases it's when you're lifting the weight. The concentric should be as fast as possible. So you should explode on the way up and control the weight on the way down. Range of motion, long length partials. Here, conventional wisdom is wrong because full range of motion is actually worse at building muscle than partial range of motion when done in the stretched part of the movement. Now, long length partials is doing only the half of the rep in which the muscle is the most stretched. Number of sets per week, 12 to 20 sets. The graph of the muscle gain per set looks something like this. By doing less than 12 sets per week, you're still leaving some room for muscle growth. By doing 12 to 20 sets, you're getting all the muscle growth you can. And by doing more than 20 sets per week, you are not gaining any more muscle. So the sweet spot is 12 to 20 sets per week. Intensity. Failure is not necessary. Reaching muscular failure means that you cannot do any more reps, even if they paid you a million dollars. Reaching failure is not necessary to maximize muscle growth. But it's not worse either, so training to failure can still be an optimal approach. 0 to 3 reps in reserve. Let's say in a given exercise with a given weight, you can only do 10 reps. If you were to do 8 reps, you would lift 2 reps in reserve, 
If you were to do six, you would leave four reps in reserve. So the reps in reserve are essentially how many reps you have left in the tank before reaching failure. Research shows that proximity to failure is important for muscle growth, but there's not a clear threshold, so the general advice is leaving between three and zero reps in reserve. Rest between sets. Rest three minutes. You should rest around three minutes between sets. This doesn't have to be exact, so you don't need to time your rest if you don't want to. Frequency, two or three times per week. You should train each muscle twice or three times per week. Types of split, push-pull legs. The first day you train chest, shoulders and triceps. The second day you train back and biceps. And the third day you train legs. Then you repeat this twice per week in order to achieve the frequency discussed before. Arnold split. The first day you train chest and back. The second day you train shoulders, biceps and triceps. And the third day you train legs. And as before, you need to repeat this twice per week. Upper lower. The first day you train your upper body, which is chest, back, shoulders, triceps and biceps. And the second day you train your legs. And you need to repeat this twice or three times per week. Exercises. High stretch. You need to prioritize exercise where the muscle gets fully stretched. For example, the overhead tricep extension is gonna be a better exercise than tricep kickbacks, since your tricep is more stretched when your arm is over your head than when it's behind your back. Progressive overload. Progressive overload means gradually increasing the difficulty of an exercise over time mainly increasing the weight you lift. So for example, push-ups are not gonna be a great exercise since you can't really increase the weight in a comfortable way. Bulk, 100 to 500 calorie surplus. If you wanna gain weight, you should be in a 100 to 500 calorie surplus, meaning that you need to eat from 100 to 500 more calories than you burn. If you follow this surplus correctly, you should be gaining 0.1 to 0.5 kilograms per week, most of it being muscle, but also some fat. Cut. 500 calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is the opposite of a calorie surplus. So if you want to lose weight, you should eat 500 less calories than you burn. This will make you lose around 0.5 kilograms of fat per week. Protein. 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram per day. Let's say you weigh 70 kilograms. Then you multiply 70 by 1.6 and by 2.2 and you get that you should be eating between 112 and 154 grams of protein. If you struggle to eat this much protein, you can take protein powder. Fats. 15 to 45 percent of total calories. You first decide how many calories you want to eat. Then you multiply the calories by these percentages and divide it by 9, since 1 gram of fat has 9 calories. And that's how many grams of fat you should eat per day. So let's say you want to eat 2000 calories then 2000 times 0.15 and 2000 times 0.45 is 300 and 900. And if you divide it by 9, you get that you should eat between 33 and 100 grams of fat per day. Carbs, 40 to 60% of total calories. Normally, you would first calculate the protein and fats you need to eat, and the remaining should be consumed in the form of carbs. Creatine monohydrate, 3 to 5 grams per day. Creatine slightly increases muscle growth, so if you want to maximize your progress, take 3 to 5 grams of creatine per day. Caffeine, 5 to 6 milligrams per kilogram per day. Caffeine doesn't boost muscle growth, but if you take it before a workout, it can increase your energy while training. Congratulations on watching the whole video, you now have more knowledge than 99% of bodybuilders. Here's the tree in case you want to take a screenshot and see you on the next one. Good luck!